A while back, the Akron Sports Car Club encountered some issues with the wireless timing system for its race courses. So, since Summit Racing is a proud supporter of the Akron Sports Car Club, that was the first call they made. And Summit Racing turned to the RF experts at DX Engineering to try to understand the problem and offer some solutions. So follow along and we'll show you how a few smart upgrades help restore and improve the performance of this wireless timing system. So my name is Brian Heller. I'm part owner of the Akron Sports Car Club. I've been doing motorsports and timing and scoring for nearly a decade. Probably do about 30 to 35 events a year. I'm Corey Gibson, W3JL. I'm the uh, senior engineering manager here at DX Engineering, electrical engineer, and this is my world, RF. I do a lot of events around the country. Some events that we do just happen to be by military bases or other Air Force bases. I work here with this farm tech equipment a lot of times when we're doing autocross events. For a few years, I would notice irregularities with finish trips or you know finish starts, things like that. And I always kind of knew that there was something going on because it would work most of the time, but then just every once in a while, just something weird would happen. And we do big events and things have to be accurate, cannot have mistakes, especially when things are on TV or a live stream or like we've done big cash prize handouts. So the first problem we had was these farm tech equipments came with a small 2DBI antenna. It doesn't have a lot of gain and it, you know, first thing we did is we said, hey, we can get you more gain on that antenna. That will take your signal and get it where it needs to be and make it appear louder to the, the receive unit. So that's the first thing we did is we got just the, the higher gain antennas to help with that. The next problem we tried to solve is in an area where you've got a lot of fire traffic, people with FRS radios, maybe even some ham radio operators, you've got a lot that RF noise floor is up high. There's a lot of noise. You're in a big room crowded with a lot of people talking and I'm trying to pick out one person that I'm listening to. It's hard. So the next thing we looked at was a bandpass filter. This bandpass filter will take everything besides the frequencies of these farm tech units out of the picture and so you focused on the person you're trying to listen to or the device you're trying to listen to. The way it works with an antenna, the antenna put, provides a constant impedance to the, the transmitter. The transmitter still puts out the same amount of power, but what we're really doing is if you think of the RF signal as a balloon, we have so much air and we've got a balloon, the, the smaller antennas put out a round sphere of RF. These antennas, as you get the bigger antenna, the better gain, it squeezes that balloon, it pushes the top down, so we're not sending signal straight up into the air, but we're sending it out further to where the transmitter, to reach the transmitter. Same amount of RF, same amount of power, just directed where you need it to go. And I've used the bigger, more powerful antennas that Corey gave us, and I was able to use them all event, no problem. As far as the intermittent signals or intermittent trips that we would occasionally get at some of these places like Peru, Indiana, or, or even Vegas, where we're out by Nellis Air Force Base, it got rid of all those issues. It's kind of like a balance between timing and scoring and your course designer. So like I work with my dad, Eric Keller, and he sets up a course and tries to optimize the space as much as possible. Some of the events that we do were, were pretty limited with K-Rail because they're spectators and you gotta have TV equipment. And if we end up having finish issues or whatever, because usually we try to keep our starts close to the trailer, but if the finish isn't tripping, we have a Yagi antenna that I'll swap out the little Omnis for and try to put a Yagi on now. However, I now have a big hunk of metal out on course, and you know that's obviously kind of a safety hazard. And what a lot of clubs do is they put you know 20 feet of cable, coax cable with their Yagis to get it away from the finish as much as possible. But whatever gain you had on applying a, a Yagi to your eye, you now kind of lost by stretching out a massive cable. These bigger antennas here that uh, DX got, um, you could stick one of those out on your finish eyes and that eliminates the need for uh, a Yagi. So what we were gonna offer here, DX Engineering Summit Racing, we've partnered together with the Akron Sports Car Club and we're gonna offer two packages. One package is just the antennas. It's a two pack of the antennas. It'll help your eyes out on the field have a better signal getting back into the base unit. And those, are, those will be available. If you need more, you can buy multiple two packs. The other kit that we're gonna offer will include the bandpass filter for help with those noisy situations. It'll also include a cable that will plug into the actual receive unit 
with a connector that'll connect into the bandpass filter. So that'll be, get you ready to go. And then you have a couple options. One from there, you can do a custom cable from DX Engineering. We recommend LMR 600, end mail to end mail cable to get out to your Yagi. We would not recommend going more than 10, 15 feet. At 900 megahertz, the losses in the cable really add up quick and you're gonna lose the benefit of the Yagi. So that's one option. And we're also gonna probably have an adapter. We'll have an adapter on here that we can put one of these higher gain antennas and help get your signal received into the timing unit more, more reliably. One of the big things about this equipment is, you know, if you put a small antenna on top of the timing unit and you're in a metal trailer, you're not gonna get any signal. So, you know, the, the, the standard farm tech, you know, antenna is meant to get you outside of the trailer and help you get that outside of that, what we call a Faraday cage of that metal area there. So that works, but you know, obviously, you know, the more gain you have on the antennas, giving you options on, on increasing it, with the adapter kit that you would get with the filter system, you'd be able to use this antenna or you'd be able to use some other antennas that are out there as well. The biggest part of any signal is getting it outside, right? If you get your signal outside, it's gonna be a lot better. The, the walls of the trailer, walls of a building, they will all absorb that RF signal as you go. You know, if you're having some issues with your system, you know, give DX Engineering a call. We're RF folks, that's what we do. We live it, breathe it, eat it, sleep it every day. So we might be able to help you with some questions on that. So, from wireless race timing systems to ham radios, it's just another way DX Engineering is offering smart RF solutions for its customers. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe to the DX Engineering YouTube channel. That way, you won't miss out on any new product features, tech shorts, or celebrity interviews. Thanks for watching.